In a perfect world, we would be able to see the end to cancer. But toward that goal, we need to understand how cancer initiates and develops. The functions of the Cancer Biology Program are to bring together clinicians and basic researchers to collaborate and share their ideas about different cancers and really use that multidisciplinary approach to come up with new diagnostics or therapeutics. This program is looking at the basic cell biology and looking at how things in the cell go wrong when you get a cancer. And then the idea is that we can come up with novel biomarkers. But that journey can't begin without cancer biology. It's an entry point to a process that will one day make a difference for cancer patients everywhere. Colon cancer is the third leading cause of cancer-related deaths in the United States. And to better understand it, we are studying a tumor suppressor protein that is involved in suppressing that very first step of colon cancer development. So far, we've learned that this tumor suppressor not only stops cells from proliferating and dividing and becoming more cells, but it also likely has a role in inflammation and in suppressing inflammation. So what that means is that we have a new connection between this tumor suppressor protein and inflammation. And we can use this information now to develop new drugs to fight colon cancer. We're far from being able to cure colon cancer, but if we can prevent it and treat it, then that's how we know we've been successful. My lab's been studying the process of cancer metastasis for about 25 years. Most notably, we've been involved in the discovery of eight genes that are turned off when cancers become motile and move to other parts of the body. They're called metastasis suppressors. We've been working to figure out how those genes work so that we can make mimics of them and use that information to help patients who have metastatic disease. By looking at the genetics within cancer cells, we believe that we will be able to explain why certain ethnic groups are more resistant or susceptible to cancer. That information can help guide doctors into how aggressive they need to be when treating cancer patients. In the past few years, we have identified two genes that are suppressors of pancreatic cancer metastasis and the early clinical data show that they could have the potential for improving that 2% survival to 25 or 30% survival, which would be a huge discovery. Breast cancer is one of the most commonly diagnosed diseases in women, with over 232,000 cases diagnosed in the U.S. every year. While patients who have non-invasive disease face high survival rates, women who are diagnosed with invasive or metastatic disease face much lower survival rates. So we are interested in understanding the mechanisms of disease progression in order to design more effective treatments. One of the studies that we are doing right now is to analyze the expression patterns of two different proteins to see if they are associated with poor patient prognosis and disease recurrence. The class of molecules that we are studying is known as the chemokine family, and the chemokines are normally involved in regulating the recruitment of immune cells. But we can show that these molecules are overexpressed in breast cancer and actually signal directly to breast cancer cells to enhance survival and invasiveness. Ovarian cancer is considered a silent disease by many because the symptoms are very vague. We know that early detection works. So what we are doing here is to get better biomarkers so that we can detect the patient at an early stage where we can save lives. One of the things that we are trying to do is to understand the mechanism of drug resistance. Patients initially will respond to chemotherapy, but with multiple rounds of chemotherapy, they become resistant. So we are trying to identify genes that promote drug resistance. The idea is that if we find these genes, we may be able to target these genes and reverse the chemotherapy resistance. So far, we have made two important discoveries 
involving two major genes in ovarian cancer. So with the discovery of these genes, we can now target them with drugs to treat ovarian cancer. We are quite optimistic that in the near future, we'll be able to identify ovarian cancer patients at early stage where we can provide curative treatment. I'm always fascinated with bone cancer, especially the osteosarcoma, because this type of cancer easily metastasizes all over the body. So what I learned is current therapy is not really efficiently killing the cancer cells. And the only way we can improve the current therapy is research. So far, we've discovered a couple of proteins that can suppress cancer metastasis, especially osteosarcoma and liver cancer. I'm very much interested in the gene name P53 because P53 mutation is observed in more than 50% of human cancer. And once it's mutated, it promotes the cancer progression. Through my research, I found a drug which can specifically degrade mutant P53. So what I'm trying to do now is to understand the mechanism how this drug can induce mutant P53 degradation, and more importantly, we would like to bring this drug to the clinical trial. So this is groundbreaking in helping the fight against the cancer. National Cancer Institute designated cancer centers, such as the University of Kansas Cancer Center, have a role to make discoveries and translate those discoveries into clinical practice. The goal is to fight cancer, and this is helping us get there.